Rob and Slim Show. Oh, Jesus. Why do I do this to myself? <laughs> <laughs> Steve Coulter, welcome aboard. I had a perfectly <laughs> lovely evening sitting on my back steps. <laughs> But oh well, uh, we just Nothing ruined it. To tonight. Oh, I know. <laughs> you you make it sound like calling us is like committing suicide or something. <laughs> no, it's more like uh, going to the, going getting my prostate checked. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like that. Except I have a cup of coffee, so that's nice. Uh, uh, coffee colonic. I like. Yes. That. Well, hello, boys and girls. Well, uh, what's up, Steve? How's your summer been? It's been very good. How about just, well, you guys, Rob, you had a rough summer. Yeah, it was rough. My dad, he just got, he, after we did that show, he got home like the next week, like after that, and he's well, still got a long How's he go. doing? He's okay. He's going to like therapy and doctors like every day. Like he's got a long way to go, but it's, uh, I, the only real problem I think he's having is like short term memory. So, out of everything, oh, it could be it could be a lot worse. Like so, yeah, but, yeah. They, it, no, it was a motorcycle accident. Yeah, deer just ran out of the woods right and rammed it right in the front of his bike, and he went flying. Oh, Luckily, somebody saw it and called the cops. Uh, otherwise, if you know, he could have been ran over. Oh. Like he was laying in the yeah. road, completely laid out and all. But the thing was, the cop came by the house. And he said all he complained about was his um, shoulder hurt. So, like, even uh, later, the um, the EMTs brought his stuff by, like his leather jacket and all. And they said, yeah, no, your dad seems like he's going to be okay. And then the next, next time I saw him was, like, the picture, all the tubes and all. And it's like, wow, no. He was like, wow, no. It's, like, a real geez, shocking because really. you're not expecting that from what everybody's telling you. You're expecting, like, yeah. oh, it's going to be, like, nothing. And yeah, then no, you his see shoulder it. just yeah. yeah, and then, wow, no, he's he was on life support all summer. Like, yeah, wow. Oh, really? It was, it was rough. But thank you, Steve. Yeah, we raised uh, a little over $1,700. So my mom, when oh, I gave wow. her the money, she was just so touched. Um, I called her, like, I, I, I kept it a surprise. So... Once I had the money, like the first part of it, I'm, I told her to just stop by and see me where I was working, and I gave oh. it to her, and she said how earlier she was just trying to figure out, you know, how to pay some bills and all that. So it was awesome. it was yeah. amazing. Yes. All right. Oh, I, I saw you in a new movie with, uh, Ju with Hugh Jackman. Oh, wow. Hugh Jackman. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's coming out in about a month or so, I think, on November, election day, I think it comes out. And it's about a politician who was, is he involved in like a yeah, conspiracy Gary, or? Yeah, Gary, do you, do you remember Gary Hart? Do you read newspapers? No, <laughs> no neither one no. of us does. <laughs> newspapers, I read well, comic books, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Gary <laughs> Hart, he was really, he, he, it was the first time, because up until him, you know, the personal life of a politician was really, there was this unwritten code that the uh, newspapers and news just wouldn't write about their personal stuff. And that kind of got broken with him because he had this affair with, uh, was it Donna Rice or whatever. And it's all sort of about that, about that moment in history where everything changed and it was sort of open season and about the ethical questions about that. And it's pretty cool. It should be, I'm, I play a, a, a guy with the Washington Post. Cool. That's kind of fun. Yeah, so. when I read uh, I read the synopsis in the movie, it said how like they were surprised no one else had done a movie about the guy because it's, it's yeah a crazy story. <laughs> but it's uh, yeah, it's gonna be pretty good. So oh, I have I have a bone to pick with America, and and Ooh. this is the place to talk about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Well, I don't know. There's this other film I did. It's coming out October 14th. It's with Ryan Gosling called First Man. You know, it's about Neil Armstrong. Oh, wow. Okay. And it's a big, big film. And what happened was it premiered at a film at the Venice Film Festival, which is sort of a big deal, and it got incredible reviews. It's, it's uh, written and directed by Damien Chazelle, who did La La Land and you know won an Oscar, Best Director. And it's got Ryan Gosling and Kyle Chandler, a bunch of folks. But the issue that came up is someone mentioned, some reviewer mentioned that they don't show, because it, it's Neil Armstrong, and uh, who, you know, the first man on the moon. And the issue that was brought up, this is so crazy, <laughs> was that they don't show them planting the American flag. Oh. Now, mind you, the American flag. 
And so I, uh, on Twitter, I should have stayed away, but I couldn't. Um, on Twitter, all these conservative fellas uh, and were going, this is, this is the Hollywood elite once again, whitewashing, it's making it a globalist, leftist Why was thing, it the Russian grand, flag? Russian, Canadian. <laughs> and, I, and I wrote to these guys and I said, okay, first of all, and the, well, yeah, because one guy called me, once again, I think I talked about this last time. They called me the Hollywood elite, and I reminded him that, okay, first of all, I live in Atlanta. I drive a Honda. <laughs> right. uh, and if, if I'm the elite, the elite's in a lot of trouble. Uh, but I said, I said, I, and this one guy who's like a big, he's got like two million followers. I said, I will refund your ticket if you go to this movie, and it is not the most inspiring American movie of the year because it's, and it's just they're making this big deal. Without, what I love is people making judgments without having seen it. Yes, yes. And it's and then oh, and, and the things, the names they called me and wow. Pinko, this, that, and this, oh my god. Oh, man. They said we're not going to waste our money on another socialist. Da da da. And I was like, oh my wow. god, go! I told several people just. Go outside, get some air. <laughs> they, they really are just bad on both sides because, like, conservatives uh, will always talk shit about how liberals get like that, but then conservatives do the same shit. So yeah, I mean, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, and both sides, yeah, because it's like I had, there was a woman, this very, very liberal person that was going after someone because they they said something nice about, it was some Democratic woman running for Congress that said something nice about McCain. And she said, you're a sellout. Yeah, he was a war criminal. I was like, Jesus Christ, guys, wow. lighten the hell up. Yeah, there's, I... there's a middle road here. Yes. Think, you know, we're all in the same boat. I think we all used to be more in the middle of the road than than the way it yeah, is now. It's, it's it's crazy. Yeah, people just look for both sides. Just sort of look for ways to attack each other. Yeah, instead of like, well, that's not going to end well. I feel like that too with yeah. McCain. He was one of the guys that was more in the middle. He would work with either side. Like that was admirable. exactly, exactly. And it's like, oh yeah, well, <laughs> our country. So, well, so Steve. So, but, Tell us then, like, why don't you show them planting the American flag? <laughs> I know, Steve. <laughs> yeah. Well, they do. it's in the movie. There's a shot, if I'm not mistaken, Did where you, you see the, the American flag just because they don't show them planting it. Ah. Oh, you know? Okay. And it's like, come on, guys. It's And it's all these Americans working real hard and doing the impossible. And it's like, that's why I keep telling them. It's going to be a very inspiring, exciting Film. From what I yeah. hear, it's supposed to be spectacular. Wow. So, and not because I'm in it. <laughs> <laughs> I saw, I did, I watched The Lifetime. I watched Megan and Harry. And oh, goodness gracious. I kept the volume down for most of it, but when I saw you pop up, I turned the volume up. And your first line in that was so dry and so good. I think it was just about <laughs> how one of, one of the sons didn't like you or something, but you, you cracked me up. You cracked me up. <laughs> Acting, my boy. Is and acting. that that lion, it was it was amazing. That lion, very was impressive, great. wasn't it? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. I saw it too. You were in uh, you were in the founder with Michael Keaton. Very, very, just one little scene. Okay. Very briefly, I was just a doctor saying something. I, I, I was going to ask if you bugged him to say I'm Batman the whole time, because I would have. I did. I passed him on my way. I'd finished shooting, and I was walking out, and he was walking in, because my scenes were with him, and I was like, hey. And he went, hey. And that was my Michael Keaton brush with greatness right there. Oh, man. I, I loved him in uh in Spider-Man. The Amaz was it The Amazing, when he was yeah, uh, yeah, Vulture? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Most recent one, yeah. Oh man, he still has it. He's still good. No, he's and actually the founder. Not many people saw it, but it's actually really. It'll make you think differently about McDonald's. I it's haven't really seen it, but I've heard it's movie. a really good movie. Yes, I've heard. Oh yeah, movie. okay, the founder. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did see Frank that. Crump. I really, I really did enjoy that movie. Yeah, I saw, saw like I saw. I didn't watch the whole thing, but I saw like the first hour of it, and I enjoyed like what I had watched. It was really well. It's really interesting. Really interesting sort of, story. It's really inspiring at first, and then you see that oh, Ray Kroc turned it turned it into a monster. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, cool. yeah, that's, that's yeah. what I got from the trailer. Like, yeah, yeah. now nah, he seems like he was because it was just like the two brothers made this company, and then he just oh, fucking did he cut stole him out? it. Pretty oh, much, that's, basically. That's pretty much, yeah, that's what he did. <laughs> that's what's gonna yeah. happen with the show eventually. <laughs> yeah. It'll be the Rob, yeah. the Robin Hood. <laughs> That's right. 
<laughs> well, what have you guys been doing? What's what's new with you? What's Slim done? What's Slim done this summer? I haven't done too much. I've, I I started for the first time watching uh, The Sopranos because I had never seen it, and I finally oh, was like, really? I want to watch oh. The Sopranos on uh, four seasons and love it. What an amazing show! I think that show really yeah, did I've... set the precedent for the shows that are around now. Like yeah, yeah, Game exactly. It changed and... television. It really did. It's uh, yeah. I've been watching uh, Who is America, Steve? Have you checked that out with uh, Sasha no, Baron Cohen? No, what's that? Sasha Baron Cohen's new show where he plays oh, yeah, different yeah. characters yeah. and interviews it's like... Shocking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. It's the best. It is the best. <laughs> He's like, he has no fear. <laughs> no. He's like... <laughs> oh. He's good. I don't know how he's still alive. I don't. Yeah. I know. It's not going well, and hiding after have, this. You mm. must have a team of lawyers that work with him. Yes. It's like, like, he wants like, well, how do these, how do they get away with that? Yes. What they get people to do and say, and it's like, good Lord. He's got to have a sweet, like, disclaimer they sign before every, yeah. every interview. <laughs> yeah. I think that they think they're just interviewing with some obscure little TV show that will never see the light of day. I want to know though. I don't realize it's... How does he get like? How does he get OJ? Like he's got to have some great PR man. Like he's got to have some great person like booking these yeah. interviews. Like, <laughs> oh. Uh, <laughs> what uh, Steve? I wanted to ask. Um, what did you do before you acted? Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's weird because I, you know, I went to an actual acting school, which does not prepare you at all for life at all. Because you're trained. It was back nowadays at acting conservatories. It's like there's a, there's a handful of schools like Juilliard and the one I went to, North Carolina School of the Arts, where they, they give you this massive training for four years. I mean, you do voice and combat and singing and acting and plays and everything. Yeah. And nowadays they 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 prepare the actors for getting out in the world, and we were not. And I went straight to New York. I had like eighty dollars in my pocket, and I actually had a, I'd gotten a really good agent. And it was weird because the first month I was there, I was auditioning for like leads in movies, and I thought, "Wow, this is I'm set." Yeah. But I didn't. But I was competing against like Sean Penn and people, so I didn't have you know a big chance. And then that agent <laughs> just sort of cut me loose. And my first job, I, I must have worked. I worked at like a. I was a bouncer at a folk club, uh, and at Folk City, which is where like Bob Dylan started out. And did that. I was a messenger of the World Trade Center. I did. You do just about anything you can. And I drove trucks. I installed custom window shades. I worked uh, at a warehouse. I literally dug ditches. I did carpentry. I did. Oh, Lordy. And it took about 10 years before uh, I made a living doing it. It wasn't until about around 92 that I was like, oh, this is all, it, it, until I you know, paid all my bills with just acting. Wow. Um, and you go through every, you get you do stuff and then you get cut out of movies. I, went, I thought I was discovered once. Oh, this is a very sad story. You want to hear a sad story? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. This yes. was the guy, you know, the first, uh, well, they had you know, Tim Burton did the first Batman movies, and then um, Joel Schumacher took over, mm. and he was this big. He was really, really uh, hot director. This is like around '94, and at that time, I had like a one-year-old daughter, and nine-year-old son, and I had been auditioning for stuff. I was in Atlanta then, and you know, back then, you know, Atlanta is really, really busy now. But back then, there was not that much opportunity. And he was in town promoting Batman, but he was also casting his a big film called A Time to Kill with Sandra Bullock and uh, Matthew McConaughey's first movie. It was a big deal in all the papers. And I went in, I was sort of like, I compared it to like Charlie Brown and the football of like, you know, I just, I was so like, uh, I don't want to audition. I went in, I met the casting director mm. and she said, oh, you'd be very good for this one part. It's this FBI guy who's undercover with the Ku Klux Klan and he saved Sandra Bullock's life. And oh. so I went home, I read the book, came back and sort of like, again, like Charlie Brown, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll maybe come outside. <laughs> and then I went and read for her and she goes, oh, that's wonderful. She's British. She goes, we want you to meet Joel on, I think, the next Tuesday. So I go down, it was at the Ritz-Carlton in Atlanta, 
and I go in and there's just Joel Schumacher and the, and the producer and, uh, I go in and I couldn't have like ridden it more pod. I finish and they pause and they go, where have you been? And, and just saying every nice thing I could ever have, you know, imagine it was a really Charlie Brown kicking the football. Yeah. <laughs> and they, said, we, they said, we really like you. Oh, this is, this is terrific. And, and where did you train? And you're obviously, what are you doing in Atlanta? Da, 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 da. My ego. And I left that hotel just, walking on the air <laughs> yeah. and a week a week later i got a call from my agent says warner brothers has called us and they're very interested in you for this role and i'm thinking this is it this is my big break right <laughs> yeah this is gonna be it yeah well then a couple of weeks go by and another couple of weeks and it's like august about a month later and they go well yeah you're not gonna get that role but uh he still really likes you still really likes you and then like okay all right and then about another month goes by and they've already started shooting and i'm thinking yeah oh here we go again uh, and they send me a script and they say you're playing the clansman and i was like oh boy <laughs> the Klans- so i read the script and there's no clansman <laughs> no, no, so there's no clansman you're just there there's about 500 clansmen they have a, there's a big long like 10 page scene oh, no. where they have a riot there's a big rally and there's these clansmen and these black demonstrators and there's a big riot and someone sings a song and then and i'm thinking well, okay they said none and they they paid me a double scale, which is a lot for 1994, which yeah, never yeah. happens. Yeah. They, I, I drive out to Mississippi. They said, do you want to fly out or, or they'll give you money? I, so I took the money and drove because I had a, again, I had a one-year-old daughter and I needed every bit of money. Yeah. And they put me up in this big hotel suite and I'm like, okay, but I still don't know what part I have. <laughs> and then so I, the oh. next morning the van picks me up at like 6 a.m. and we're driving and the woman in the car was the costume, you know, Joel Schumacher's costume designer was worked with him on like 10 films. And she goes, who are you playing? And I'm like, I'm the Klansman. (laughs) (laughs) And she goes, I go, but I don't really know what role I have. And she goes, oh, no, no, don't worry, Joel. In every film he has, there's usually one actor that he just loves, and he finds a place for them. And I was like, oh, great. Okay, I'm back in the saddle. <laughs> yeah, right. It's going to be okay. <laughs> so we get to this, in the middle of like an hour north of Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, oh, God, that's a whole other story. <laughs> and and we're in this big town square, and, and the holding place for the actors where they take us is this little chapel that's on the square. And... I'm sitting there, and there's this young African-American woman. Her name is Buttercup. I think her name was. She's a singer, and she's going to be the woman that sings the song before the rally, before the riot starts. And I'm sitting next to her and waiting, and, and they did all this makeup. They had, they did it made me look really all beat up, sort of, and sweaty and all this, and my teeth looked... It was really kind of But cool. you still thought, don't know this. what you're playing. <laughs> other than the still don't you're know, missing and I'm teeth. Dressed in a, I've got my Klansman robe on. <laughs> and uh, thinking, well, this is... Gonna be, and it's like a 10 day. They had me there for like 10 days. I'm like, okay, this is going to be, you know... Yeah, it's going to pay off. So finally, Joel Schumacher walks in. And mind you, the last time I saw him, he made me think that I was like this big discovery the next and thing so, yes and he he looks over at us and i stand up and buttercup stands up and he he has this big smile his arms reach out and i start to walk towards him and he goes buttercup <laughs> <laughs> i thought you were gonna say he spit and on he, you <laughs> and, and somehow sad and optimistic i'm thinking well i mean as soon as he sees me he will Shout out, Steve! <laughs> yeah, right. And then, so he's, he's hugging Buttercup, and then he looks at me, <laughs> kind of like I have a disease. <laughs> You're our Buttercup, goes, Steve. He says, "He says, who are you? <laughs> like, who are you? He says, who are you? Oh, no. And no. I said, "I'm the Klansman." <laughs> and he just he, he pauses, and with a with a disgust in his voice, he says. I've got a lot of Klansmen, and he turns and walks out. Whoa! <laughs> wow! And I'm like, okay. And so it turns out, like, I'm in the damn movie, but yeah. I have a Klansman's hood on, and I'm with these, like, 300 other extras <laughs> from <laughs> Mississippi. I'm, like, the, basically the highest paid extra in the state of Mississippi. And they'll do things like they'll break for lunch, and they'll go, <laughs> Steve Coulter, come to lunch. And all the extras are these guys that you know, probably 
unemployed, angry. They Southern really guys. are Klansmen. <laughs> yeah, they probably actually are Klansmen. <laughs> and they look at me like, you know, why does your shit not stay? <laughs> and so not only now they hate me. <laughs> <laughs> And it's like, because I'm not doing anything that they're not doing. Yes. And and so, and I just ended up being, going back every day, doing, I got a sunburn, which is great to have a sunburn in Mississippi. Cause, and I finally, yeah, and then I just went, well, he just really liked you, but he never really found a place for you. And what I really think is that they just somehow, in a clerical error, they never decided not to cast me or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But I remember I was driving back from Mississippi. I literally sobbed in the car thinking, oh, my career is over. This is it, yeah. And I was listening to Mary Chapin Carpenter and crying like a oh, baby. Oh, <laughs> so, so that's oh. what I did before I made a living. Oh, yes, it is a hard yeah. road. It is a hard road, Steve. I want to ask, too, um, last time we talked to you, you mentioned being friends with uh, Melissa McBride. And I wanted to ask, yes. how far into acting did you meet her or did you know her before you acted? Yeah, well, I was doing, this is like, God, back in 1991, me and a bunch of other actors and writers, we did this thing we called Dark Night, where we would do scenes and original work and stuff, and then we would perform it on Monday nights at different theaters. And she was just sort of hanging around. She was a friend of one of the actors, and she, I don't know if she was acting then, she was just maybe a little interested in acting, she was sort of, she had one of those big beta cams and she was sort of videotaping behind the scenes stuff and just sort of hanging around. Wow. I think so, well, that's where I first met her. And then well, there was an acting class in Atlanta and we did a bunch of scenes together and she was just really, really, really good. And, um, and she had a real, uh, she had a, a lot of stage fright. We did a, uh, I was directing one time a reading of a screenplay for just like there was a film festival there and they would do a reading of like the winning screenplay and it was only for like 30 people and she was really really nervous um just because she hadn't done a lot of theater and stuff and i think she had a bad experience doing a play in high school or something wow and so it just really um but she was an extraordinary it's that old thing of you know you can you can learn to act and it's, but there's some people, it's just like, a, it's like an athlete. Some people just have a real talent for it. The knack. And, and she had that. And uh, yeah. she, um, she was always a very, very private person and not, you know, she became, she stopped acting for a while and then she became a casting director. I think I mentioned that she was a, she cast commercials and stuff in Atlanta for years. Wow. And then I think Frank Darabont who had cast her in the mist and really, really liked her. Uh, I think called her up and offered her the role of Carol in Walking Dead, and that's sort of where things just you know took off. How and, how much uh, of her own personality is in Carol? I feel like she brings a lot of it. I, I don't she, know. Well, she's one of the most interesting people. She's really funny. She's very. Um, she's not a typical like ambitious actor. She doesn't talk about the business. Um, she's just very kind and normal and shy and. Um, and she's tough. She's been through a lot in her life, yeah. which I won't get into, but yeah. she's, she's been through more than her share of stuff than most people. But, um, yeah, she's a very independent, kind, funny, silly, nice person. It's one of those things that couldn't have happened to a nicer person, wow. but it's also, it's, it's rough on her. I may have mentioned this last time because she is being a private person. I don't think she likes doing these. Well, because of the nature of her character, it appeals to so many men, and but particularly women, and especially early on with all the she's you know Carol's an abuse survivor, and yes. so she would do these cons, and, and you have hundreds of people coming up to her who are coming to get something signed, but they also want to talk to her, and the kind of person she is, I'm sure she wanted to talk to them some more, but it doesn't allow for that. So I think it was a very uncomfortable thing for her to have to do so i don't think she does she doesn't do many of those she'll do one or two a year I think. yeah oh wow but um so but yeah she's a good she's a good egg nice she's, um, and really re uh, just uh uh naturally incredibly talented actor yeah um yeah and, uh, and yeah 
Yeah. She's no clan. <laughs> she's no clansman, Steve. <laughs> but no, she is no clansman. <laughs> yes. Well, that's another thing. You also get to be because you also get cut out of stuff. I remember one time yes. I was in a oh god, it's a movie called The People versus Larry Flint. I love that Woody movie. Harrelson. Yes. Yeah. Well, you didn't <laughs> see me in it. No. <laughs> I, like, I don't up, remember. You know, I watched. You know. Cuckoo's Nest, directed by Milos Forman, and I got to, I had to go to Nashville, I think it was, to audition, and I met him, and he had me, the whole audition was just one long improvisation, and it was so much fun, it was so great, and they gave me this part, I was the National Lampoon editor, and I had this long monologue, and it was part of sort of a montage of the, the you see these, something happens, and you see the reaction of the New York Times, and you see the reaction of the yes. National Lampoon guy. Yeah. And I went to the, I went to a premiere in Atlanta. It wasn't like the premiere. And I went to it, and there was this guy sitting next to me who was uh, very competitive with me. He was like, he said, what are you doing here? And I was like, well, I'm, I'm in the movie. And then I'm, well, I'm watching the movie, and then, you know, I knew the script really well, and I'm watching the movie, and like, there's a whole other part that suddenly pops up, and I'm like, well, this wasn't in the script, and it's like, oh, this they're not going to have my part of the movie, and, <laughs> and so I came and went, and I was like, oh, I'm not in the movie. <laughs> so, you, so that happens. So yeah. you, you have to, that's why it's nice when you play a role where you know it's a pivotal part of the plot, especially early yes. on when you have just one scene you do a lot of that when you first start out you have one little scene i've had a friend that's been cut out of about seven movies and uh you just yeah you get kind of thick skin and you try not to be cynical because you start thinking i'm gonna get cut out of every movie right that's, i don't know like yeah, yeah. How, how many of these is there gonna be G- going yeah, back but though it happens to every actor yeah everyone did, yeah but so. Steve, going back to your whole uh, Klansman thing, like <laughs> at least Joel Schumacher oh, is. Yeah, at least really you had again. Joel thank Schumacher. Joel like Schumacher that. like turned out to be one of the worst directors ever. <laughs> so you know. <laughs> yeah, there is that. It's hard to realize. It's hard because one of the things when you realize certain things you don't get, it leads towards other stuff. Which I, you know, my daughter now is just starting out in acting, and I try. You know, she's had some disappointments. And I say, you got to just kind of trust the universe because it, everything leads to other cool things. Whether That's like in anybody's life. You go, oh, I really wanted to, I was in love with this girl and it didn't work out. And it's like, yeah, but then you wouldn't have found this other thing in your life. So you have to sort of, you know, not, it's kind of like getting hit by a car. You It hurts a lot at first, but if you just sit there by the side of the road for a year, you're not going to get any better. You, at one point, yeah. you got to get up and go, okay, well, what am I supposed to see here? <laughs> So, yeah, Steve, we have to wrap cool. this up, but thank you, thank you. Oh, thanks a lot. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Where can everybody find you, Steve? <laughs> well, you're not. You, you will not find. Well, you have my home address now, so now I'm in a. I have it. <laughs> I'm. I'm coming there. I'll be there for pizza and ice cream. <laughs> pizza and ice cream. Yeah. with Ryder. <laughs> yeah. So go see, yeah, go see First Man, and it, you'll see it's going to be. It's really is going to be awesome. It's, cool. it's unlike any movie about that stuff. It's it's and Ryan Gosling's awesome, and, it's, yeah, and I guarantee great. you, you'll be inspired, and all those conservative people can bite me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Steve. We'll talk to you soon, brother. All right. Take care, boys. You too. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. <laughs>